Good morning. Welcome to Pilates. Um, we're starting standing today just to get a little bit into the upright posture. Just going to readjust the angle of my screen a little bit more. There we go. Now, right, I want you to line up your feet 100% with each other right under your pelvis. Right under those hip joints, right? Not the outside. Your hip joint is only about four, maximum five inches apart, yeah? And then I want you to pick something to look at, eye level straight in front of you, press down through the center of your foot, out through the top of your head, feel how that starts to get a little bit of tensioning through the core and through the legs. And we're just gonna breathe here. Now, all I want you to do to help relax the shoulders a little bit is I just want you to do this kind of swirly game with your arms. That as your arms go back, your palms turn forward. As your arms come forward, the palms turn out. This is gentle. It's just encouraging the shoulders to soften and let go a little bit. Last one of these. And then let's focus in on the breath. You're gonna inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. And if that shoulder girdle is relaxed, as you breathe, your arms will slightly float away from the body and slightly float towards the body on your exhale. As the rib cage expands and contracts. One more here. Now let's amplify the arms, the inhale lift, exhale drop. Just to get the core firing a little harder, I don't know if you can sense in your own body, but as I do this, I feel a slight rock back and forward on my feet. And that is what's making your core fire, as well as a strong breath and the strong arm movement. Now, from here, we're gonna do our standing imprint. So bring your hands to the front of your legs, Little bend in the knees, straight line from your head to your tail. You're gonna inhale, imprint. Exhale, come back to neutral. Little pressure of the hands into your legs to get that low back movement. Inhale, imprint. Exhale, neutral. Imprint. And neutral, one more here. Imprint and neutral. Now I want you to stand up a little straighter. I want you to take your feet about shoulder distance apart at this point. We're going to do our figure eight. So I want you to start with your thumb and just carve an infinity sign, I guess, not a figure eight, in front of your body with your thumb. And then I want you to make it bigger. As you make it bigger, your opposite heel will come off the floor. Your body is allowed to twist. Your knees are allowed to bend. How big can you make this today? This is going to be your last one on this side with the thumb. And then we're gonna find it with your pinky. So, right, pinky starts to carve that shape. I find if I start it small, I can then go to the bigger shape. How big can you make this today? Breathing, it doesn't have to be fast. Last one of these. And then let's go to your other side. So thumb, start to carve that, I guess, infinity sign in front of you. How big can you make it? Can you go down to the floor with it and up to the ceiling? Breathing. Last one of these. Now, pinky, right? If you're like me, you start with your dominant arm first. So pinky on my non-dominant arm is a little bit more confused. How big can you make this? Last one. And then bring your feet underneath your pelvis again. Shoulder shrugs, inhale up. Exhale, ease the shoulders down. Inhale up. Exhale, ease the shoulders down one more here. Up and ease down. I want you to bring your arms in front of you. We're gonna to go to a little bit of 
protract, retract here. So you're going to inhale, reach the fingertips forward. Exhale, draw the shoulder blades back. Forward and back. Now, hands ideally are staying the same distance apart as you do this. So I'm not going, right? I'm trying to keep my hands the same distance apart. And I'm trying to keep my rib cage still as I move the shoulder girdle around the rib cage. Drop the arms down, two more shoulder shrugs, inhale up, exhale down, one more up and down. We're gonna do a forward roll. You're taking an inhale to prepare. Exhale, start with your head, round forward, inhale, bend your knees, exhale, come all the way back up again. Inhale, exhale, rounding forward, scoop your belly button in. Inhale, bend your knees. And exhale, come all the way back up again. Two more of those. Exhale as you go down. Inhale, bend your knees. Exhale, bring it back up again. One more here. Exhale as you roll down. Inhale, bend your knees. And exhale, come back up again. Now let's work a little bit on our balance. So right, we want to make sure we're not locking out our knee and hip. So the hip isn't pushing toward the knee back. You want to have a little bit of a softness in your bum and thighs. We're not tightening like crazy. And then I just want you to bring one knee forward and lift your foot up and hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Let's do that on the other side. So right, not gripping. Bring your other knee forward. Lift it up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And take it down. Now, right, going to make it 15 counts this time. So one more on each side. Softness, knee forward. Float your foot up. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. You may notice that my knee is wobbling a lot. That means my elbow, sorry, my ankle is wobbling a lot. You actually want that. Um, you're not trying to hold that foot still because that wobble is your uh, balancing system sorting things out, yeah? We don't want to do it with our brain. We want the balancing system to figure out. Let's do it on the other side. So, right, softness, bring the knee forward, and we're going 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Taking your foot down. We're going to go down to the floor. We're heading right away to rotational breathing. So you're gonna go onto your side with your knees bent in front of you. You're going to, pardon me, fighting with my light. There we go. You're gonna have your underneath arm supporting your head. Unless of course you have neck issues and then it's nice to uh, pop a pillow or something underneath your head. So right, knees are in front of you, kind of like you're in a chair, right angle of the knee and the hip. Right side of the waist is off the floor because I have my top sit bone reaching away from the top of my head, but not so much that my ribs lift. Top arm is reached forward. You're gonna inhale, point your hand at the ceiling, turn to look at it. Exhale, turn your ribs backwards, keep reaching your knees forwards. Inhale into your back and exhale coming forward. Inhale, point at the ceiling, turn to look at your hand. Exhale, turn back. Inhale, hold. Exhale forward. This is a great recovery exercise for after gardening or tennis or golf. Yeah, one more like this. Inhale up. Exhale back. Inhale. Exhale forward. Two breath. Inhale back. Exhale forward, inhale back, exhale forward. Just one more of those. Keep reaching the knees forward as you go back and come forward. Let's do this on the other side. 
So right knees are bent there in front of you. Now remember, this is not about stretching your chest. It's about getting some spinal mobility. So right side of the waist is off the floor. Top arm is reached forward. You're gonna inhale, point at the ceiling, turn to look at your hand. Now keep your hand in alignment with your shoulder as you rotate back so you can see it quite easily the whole time. Inhale, exhale, come back to where you started. Inhale, point at the ceiling, turn to look at your hand. Exhale, turn backwards. Inhale, exhale, coming forward. Inhale, point at the ceiling, turn to look at your hand. Exhale, turn back. Inhale, hold. And exhale forward. Two breath. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Just one more of those. Inhale back. And exhale forward. Let's go on to our hands and knees for some cat stretch. This is my other after gardening, golf, and tennis recovery exercises. So hands are under your shoulders, knees are under your hip. Straight line from your head to your tail, collarbones are wide. Take an inhale, exhale, point your tail down at the floor, scoop your back up to the ceiling, look back at your knees. Take an inhale, exhale, flatten back to where you started. Take an inhale, exhale, point your tailbone down, scoop your belly button in, look back at your knees, inhale. Exhale, flattening back out again. Just one more of these. Exhale as you round. Inhale. And exhale as you flatten. Let's do two on the two breaths. So exhale, round. Inhale, flatten. One more of those round. And flatten. Now, can we make this an undulation? So as you round, shift your weight towards your fingertips. As you flatten, shift towards your heels. Exhale as you round. Inhale as you flatten, really pushing up between the shoulder blades as you round, trying to get that wave going through the spine. One more here, exhale round, inhale, flatten. Now just stay square and pull your tail to one side and then the other side, one side and then the other side, breathing. One more to each side here. And then we're going to go on to our backs, please. Nothing external to your head yet because we're going right to our hip roll. So I want your legs bent, your feet within the width of your pelvis, your back in neutral. You're going to take an inhale. You're going to exhale, imprint, roll on up through the spine, pressing your feet into the floor. Knees are over ankles at the top. Take an inhale and exhale, soften through the rib cage, roll through the low back, release the pelvis to neutral. Now, if that irritated your hamstring, right, which is the back of your thigh, you need to get a little bit more inner thigh engagement. You need to get a little more sense of pressing your feet into the floor to get the back uh, of the body where the thigh and the butt meet a little bit more active so the hamstrings will be happier. Let's try that again. Take an inhale. Exhale, imprint, press in your feet, roll up, reaching your knees towards your toes. Inhale at the top and exhale, roll back down again. One more. Exhale as you roll up. Inhale at the top and exhale, rolling back down again. Beautiful. Now, if you like something extra under your head, you're going to grab it pop it under your head and we're gonna double check we know where neutral shoulders are so right legs are bent spines in neutral so right pelvis heavy low back light ribs heavy bring your arms up in front of your chest palms are facing each other now we did this standing already ready let's see if like the floor helps us find neutral though so let's go forward and come back to neutral Inhale, protract, exhale, neutral. Now, are your hands staying the same distance apart? Or are they going wide and narrow and wide and narrow? Ideally, they stay in the same distance apart. Now, when your shoulder blades are back, let's just leave them there. And exhale, reach both hands towards the floor above your head. Inhale in front of your chest. As you reach back, and remember, you're not gonna drop your 
arms past your face because what we're working on is moving the humerus bone, which is your upper arm bone, in a stabilized shoulder girdle. So it's just about trying to get that bone moving and not the shoulder joint. Yeah, one more here. Exhale back. Inhale in front of your chest. Now, we'll do it with our hands in one more position. Turn your palms to face your thighs. Are your collarbones still wide? Are your elbows still straight? Exhale, reach back. Inhale, bring your hands in front of your chest. Notice any changes in the way this feels to your shoulder, your neck, your rib cage. Maybe it's easier to stabilize your ribs here. Maybe it's more challenging. One more, exhale as you reach back and inhale in front of your chest. Let's rest your arms down on the floor by your hips and move to your head nod. So keeping your head heavy on whatever it's currently resting on, you're gonna gently nod. Inhale, tiny nod. Exhale, release. Now, the reason the nod is tiny is because our neck naturally curves towards the ceiling. So get it, getting it to curve backwards is super challenging. And so we're really just focusing on that movement right at the base of the skull. We're not trying to flatten the whole neck. Inhale, nod. And exhale, release. Back to the shoulders. Arms lift up a little bit off the floor. Palms are faced in. Collarbones are wide. Inhale, slide your shoulders towards your ears. Exhale, slide towards your heels. So right, we're moving our shoulder girdle with this exercise, right? Ideally, we can move it. We want to have options, which is why we practice moving the humerus bone just in the joint and um, moving the whole joint you know, uh, system. Yeah, which is what your shoulder girdle is. It's a system. Let's rest your arms down. Move it on to your ab grip. I want you to take your hands behind your head. I want your elbows where your ribs and shoulders are in neutral. And your elbows are much more up towards the ceiling than what most people think. You go, okay, wide sideways. Okay, pick it up a little bit. If you pick it up a little bit, you actually aren't in neutral yet because your shoulder blades aren't quite in the right place. You have to pick up your elbows even more. They're kind of at a 45 degree angle. Now, from here, sense the weight of your head in your hands. Sense the weight in your pelvis, the lightness in your low back and the weight in the back of your ribs. Inhale, take a little nod. Exhale, round through the rib cage, curl up and look at your knees. Inhale, hold. And exhale back down again. Inhale, nod. Exhale, curl up. You're gonna feel that the part of your back between your shoulder blades and your belly button just pushed hard into the floor. As you go down, try not to let it lift off the floor because if you do, your back's arching every time you lie down. Exhale, curl up. Inhale, exhale, back down again. Let's do one more of these. Exhale as you come up, softening through the front of the ribs. And back down again. Now I just want you to drop your elbows to the side. Let your knees rock side and center and side and center and breathe. And we'll just do one more to each side here. And then I want you to come onto your tummies so you, we can do a little bit of breaststroke prep. So right, you're gonna have your hands beside your head, your legs close together, your kneecaps pointing down. And you wanna feel like you're resting on the middle of your breastbone and the tip of your nose. Gently press the top of the foot into the floor a bit to get the legs a little bit engaged and the core engaged. You're gonna inhale, slide your shoulders away from your ears. You're gonna exhale, use your back muscles to lift your upper chest away from the floor. Back down again. Inhale, slide your shoulder blades. Exhale, reach out the top of the head as you lift up. Feet are heavy on the floor, inhale. Exhale, back down again. Inhale, slide your shoulder blades. Exhale, lift. Inhale. And exhale, back down again. One more of these. Inhale, slide your shoulder blades. 
Exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. And exhale back down again. Let's do the two breaths. So inhale up, exhale down. Two more of those. Inhale up, exhale down. One more. And down. Now, from here, we're going to keep our arms where they are today. And when you go to lift up, what you want to do is lift all the way from your fingertips to your elbows off the floor, right? Lift that whole forearm off the floor, including your hands. So you're going to inhale, slide your shoulders away from your ears. Exhale, lift up. Inhale, hold. Exhale, back down again. Inhale, slide your shoulder blades. Exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. Exhale, down. Two more of these. Inhale. Exhale, lift. Are your feet still heavy on the floor? And down. One more. Lift. And down. Let's press back into our shell stretch, right? So lifting up, sitting back over your heels, rounding up your back. Scoop your belly button in, a little side to side rock here. Or, right, lay on your back and hug your knees into your chest, a little side to side rock. And it's time for the hundred. So we're gonna go back onto our backs. If you're somebody who likes something extra under your head, pop it under your head. That was right, it's just a great place to start and end any exercise when you're laying on your back. I want you to take a moment when you get on your back and just double check what does neutral feel like? Does your pelvis feel heavy and wide on the floor? Your feet light, your low back light, your ribs heavy, yeah? Well, we're checking this out. Can you sense the back of the rib cage moving against the floor as you breathe? Now, it won't push back a lot. What you might be able to sense is an increased compression of the rib cage into the floor on your inhale and out of the floor on your exhale. And the part of your back I'm talking about is the mid rib wall, which is below your shoulder blades, what women identify as the bra line, and a little bit below that too. Can you feel that tissue just putting a little bit more pressure into the floor on your inhale and a little less on your exhale? Now, let's go to our 100. Remember, if your low back is sore, keep your feet on the floor. If your neck is sore, keep your head on the floor. We're gonna take an inhale to prepare, exhale, imprint. Lift one leg at a time up to your tabletop position. Squeeze your legs together if they're up. Inhale, little nod of the chin in. Exhale, curl up to look at your knees and go in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, ten. Sift, blow, two, three, four, twenty, in. Out, two, three, four, thirty. Now, if you want to make it hard, legs are straight. Out, two, three, four, forty. In. Out, two, three, four, fifty. In. Out, two, three, four, sixty. In. Reaching out those fingers. Out, two, three, four, ninety. In. I might have skipped something there. Out, two, three, four. I'm calling it a hundred. Let's come on down. Hug your knees into your chest or leave your feet on the floor, a little side to side rock. I think I might have skipped 10 there. It's hard to give different ideas to think about and keep counting at the same time. But if I skip 10, that's okay. Occasionally I add 10. Let's put your feet on the floor and come to a seated position. Now, from here, we're just going to do our fun little exercise that we've been working on to wake up the outside of the back of the arm because most of us are very, very strong in the front of the shoulder, not very strong in the back of the shoulder. That's because everything we do all day, right? For the most part is we move stuff around. We have our hands in close. So our elbows are, that upper arm bone is turned inwards. That's where we're gonna work on that outward rotation. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your elbows and bring them alongside your body. Now, of course, you're sitting in a position that's comfortable for you. Now, palms are facing each other 
And you want to feel like your collarbones are nice and wide and your shoulder blades feel like a waterfall going down your back. And that'll help your elbows be slightly further forward. Now, wherever your elbows are on your body, I want you to try to keep them there and just spin them to pull the hands away from each other and bring your hands back together. What we're spinning is not the elbows. What am I saying? It's your upper arm bone. And then bring the hands back together. Exhale, pull the hands away from each other. And inhale back together. Now, if you tighten your chest today, you'll feel a tug, a tensioning in the front of the chest as you go back. What we're looking for is a sense of compression in the back of the shoulder, that back of that upper arm. Finding those external rotator muscles, right? And you might feel something right across the top of the shoulder blade too. It's not right at the top of the shoulder. It's kind of the top of the shoulder blade. Two more here. Exhale, open. Inhale, close. Last one. Open and close. Now, from here, we're just going to go to a little bit of half roll back. So, right, you're going to have your legs bent. They're going to be right tight together. And let's just round forward over our legs, reaching your hands down towards your ankles. Take a breath or two in your back here to go, okay, that's kind of a nice place to stretch out the back. And then to do our half roll back, we have to make sure this is a C curve. If you're right tight against your legs, your back is a little bit flat. So you wanna pull your pubic bone towards your belly button soften through the front of the ribs and push out through the back of them. If the back of your neck is bugging you, lift your head up towards the ceiling a bit. You just have it drop too low. And then I want you to lift your arms up so they're parallel to the floor. Shoulder blades, once again, feel like a waterfall going down your back. Take an inhale. Exhale, rock backwards on your bum. And inhale, rock forward. Exhale, rock back. And inhale, rock forward. Now the whole time you want that sense of pulling your pubic bone towards your belly button to help your back be round, that reaching up through the back of the rib. So ideally you're feeling a sense of tensioning through the back line of the body, which is an indication that you're stretching it. Of course, there's compression in the front line of the body to create that. One more here, exhale, rock back. And inhale, rock forward. Let's do a slow roll down. So, right, arms are out. Find your C curve. We're doing a 10 count to get onto your back. Take an inhale. Exhale, rolling back. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Now, if you're prone to low back pain, roll onto your side to come back up again. Or you could just bring one knee in towards your chest. And pull yourself back up again. Let's do that two more times. So find your C curve. Take an inhale. And exhale. Roll them back. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And we'll come right back up again. And do it one more time. So find your C curve again. Shoulders are down. Take an inhale. Exhale, going back. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Let's stay down here this time. Now, if you'd like something extra under your head, pop it under your head. And let's double check we're in neutral, right? So ribs down, low back up, pelvis down, feet light. We're gonna do some single leg circles today, right? If you wanna give yourself more challenge, arms are up in front of your chest with your palms facing each other, just make sure you're not protracting there that the shoulders are in neutral. We're gonna lift one leg to tabletop or go to straight leg. And I just want you to bring, now remember, no hula dancing. So if the circle is the size of a loony and no hula dancing, that's a better option than the size of a hula hoop and lots of hula dancing. Let's take the leg across center, away from your face, see outside and back to where you started. Inhale to start your circle, exhale to finish it. Now, if you're not sure whether or not you're hula dancing, put your thumbs on your ribs, your fingertips on your pelvis. That's wiggling around a lot, I'm calling that hula dancing. Let's go the other, 
expression outside to inside. Two, three, four, and five. And place your foot down. Now, before we go to the other side, I'm just going to clarify that hand position if you want to do your hula dance check. And what it is, is you'd put your thumbs on your ribs and then use your fingertips to find your ASIS points, what we conventionally think of as hip bones on the front of our body. It's a pointy bit on the top of your pelvis, uh, just to the side about an inch or so below your belly button, yeah? So you could always have your hands here to help you know whether or not you're really dancing. So let's go to the other side. Back's in neutral, lift your leg up to tabletop or straight leg, and we're gonna go inside to outside. Inhale to start your circle, exhale to finish it. Remember, this circle could be the size of a loony. That is your third one. Four and five. Let's go the other direction, outside to inside. Two, because the most important thing, we're stabilizing the torso against the movement of the leg. Three, four, and five. And place your foot back down on the floor. We're going to come back up to a seated position. So right, you could always grab your leg to come on. And let's go to our spine twist sitting up. So, right, I want you sitting up nice and straight. Uh, I don't care about your leg position as long as your low back is nice and upright. You can either work with your hands on your ribs if your shoulders have been a little bit unhappy lately, or you can work with the arms out to the outside. If you're working with the arms to the side, I want you to look straight forward at eye level, wiggle your fingers. If you can see your fingers in your peripheral vision, your arms are in the right place. If you cannot, you've started to take them so far back that your shoulder starts to do this funny thing here, yeah? So tall, 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 three inhales to turn. Going in, two, three, exhale, center. Other side, two, three, exhale, center. In, two, Three, exhale, center. Can you see your hand as you turn and center? Taller, taller, tallest and center. Taller, taller, tallest and center. Last one here, taller, taller, tallest. Other side, taller, taller and tallest. So where we're gonna go from here is we're gonna go to a little bit of spine stretch forward. So right. Legs are, for this exercise, you either want straight legs with your feet shoulder distance apart, or you want to have diamond legs. If you're doing diamond legs, be careful of one thing. As you go around forward, don't let your elbows try to match uh, the shape of your knees, because it makes your shoulders kind of go into a place like the shoulders start to hunch up a bit. Keep your elbows narrower, and that'll make it so you get a little bit more stretch through the spine. So hands are on the front of your legs. You're sitting up nice and tall. Imagine your back's on the wall behind you. Take an inhale to prepare. Exhale, start with your head and ground forward, pulling your belly button in. Inhale into your back and exhale back up again. Now remember the elbows stay bent in this exercise. So exhale, go down, your hands will slide on your legs, but the elbows stay bent. Inhale and exhale back up again, because it's about getting a shape almost like a baby candy cane. Not that anybody could actually do that, but you know. Exhale back up again. One more of the four breath, exhale down. Inhale. Exhale back up again. Let's do three on the two breaths. So exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. One more, take it down and up. Now, I want you to lift your arms up so they're parallel to the floor. Now, when I say reach past, like over the top of your feet for this exercise, I want you to still make sure you're rounding your back. Um, I've seen some people kind of do it like this, right? You want to have that rounding. So you're going to take an inhale. Exhale, start with your head, round forward. And inhale, come back up again. Exhale, scoop your belly button in. Inhale up. So you're still trying to make a round shape with your back, but really reach forward through those fingertips. And back up again. Two more. Exhale round. Inhale up. One more. Rounding. And up. Now, 
Let's do a slow roll down to get onto our back. So bend your knees, reach your arms out. Find your C curve again. Take an inhale. Exhale, rolling back. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And we're going to stay down here. And we're going to do a little bit of uh, core work, staying in neutral today. So, right, pelvis is heavy, low back is light, ribs are heavy. I want you to lift your arms up in front of your chest with your palms facing each other. I want you to find that place where your collarbones are nice and wide. Now, you're just going to, right, feet are light, pelvis is heavy. You're gonna exhale, slowly lift one leg up to tabletop. Inhale, now exhale, reach your knee away from your chest to put your foot back down again. Inhale, exhale, same leg, slowly lifts up. Inhale, exhale, slowly take it down. Use your back arch and as you take the leg down. Exhale, lift, right? Ideally, the back of the ribs stay heavy, low back stays light. And back down again. We're going to add on. Exhale, come up. Now, I want you to imagine that that leg from ankle to knee is kind of like the cover of a book. And you're going to just open the ankle and the knee to the side and then come back to tabletop. You're going to exhale as you open and inhale, come back to tabletop. Now, just like earlier, no hula dancing. So, right, this is not a big movement. We're not turning the knee out and in, we're just opening and closing that book cover. Let's put your foot down. Got to do that on the other side. Take an inhale, exhale, slowly lift your leg to tabletop. Inhale, exhale, slowly take it back down again. Exhale, slowly lift. Now are you tightening your neck to do this? That's not necessary. And let's take your foot back down again. So right. Collarbones are wide, reach out the top of your head. That'll help your neck be happier if it's talking to you. And slowly down, add on, exhale up. Exhale, we're gonna open that book cover. Inhale, close. Exhale, open the book cover. Now is your other leg moving? If it is, you're not stabilizing everything. We wanna stabilize everything. Exhale, open. Inhale, close. One more here, open and close. And put your foot down and let's rest your arms down and rock your knees side to side. We're going to do one more add on to this exercise. So, <clears throat> right, what we're going to do is stop with the knees pointing at the ceiling. We establish neutral. Bring your arms back up again, going back to the first leg. So, for me, it's my left leg. So, it's going to take an inhale. Exhale, slowly lift that leg up to tabletop. We're going to do the book cover thing again. So ankle and knee to the side. Come back in again. Now the add-on is going to be is that as the leg does a book cover thing, the opposite arm will open to the side. So you're going to exhale, open. Inhale, come back. Exhale, open. Inhale, come back. For me, my arm always moves a little bit more than my leg because, well, it's lighter. Exhale, open. Inhale, close one more here. Open as everything else staying reasonably quiet as those two limbs move. And put your foot back down again. Let's do this on the other side. So take an inhale, exhale, lift up to tabletop. Just one little test run without the arms. So exhale, knee and ankle go to the side and come back in again. And then we're gonna exhale, open opposite arm as the leg goes out. Inhale, come back. Exhale, out. Inhale, in. Is your back still in neutral? And in, two more here, exhale, out. Inhale, in, one more, out, and in, and put it down, rest your arms down, a little rock, side to side, through the knees. So, right, we just were using our, our big time as a stabilizer against moving the limbs. Let's use it to move our torso a bit, yeah? So I want you to pop your hands behind your head and we're gonna go some, to a bit of oblique work here right now. So if you wanna make it harder, imprint and get your legs up to tabletop. I want you to sense the weight of your head in your hands 
You're gonna take an inhale, exhale, curl up, inhale here, exhale, rotate, inhale, center. Other side, center, lie down. Exhale, curl up and rotate. Other side and down. Exhale, curl up, inhale, rotate. Other side, down, one more here, curl it up. Rotate, other side, and down. Now, when you're down, if you have your feet up, let's get them down. Drop the elbows sideways again. Just do a little side to side rock here. And notice if this feels 100% the same as it did earlier in class, or does it feel a little different? Things moving more smoothly, or is there more like feeling of like, oh, there's something that just is stiff. It's okay if stuff's stiff. Stiffness is actually important, right? Uh, when we were just working on that uh, core work, uh, trying to stay in neutral, we were working on, hey, can the body, parts of the body figure out how to be stiff as other parts are more moving, yeah? That's what stability is all about. So, right, let's just do a little bit of shoulder bridge here. So, right, bring your legs uh, up so the knees are pointing at the ceiling. If uh, you have something under your head, lose it because we're gonna be lifting our butts. Make sure your back is in neutral, collarbones wide. And just take an inhale, exhale, press your feet on the floor, lift up, reaching your knees towards your toes. Inhale, hold. And exhale, keep your back straight and come back down again. Take an inhale, exhale, press your feet on the floor and lift. Inhale, exhale back down again. One more here, exhale as you lift. Inhale, and exhale back down again. Now we're gonna do an add-on. When your bum is up, we're either gonna lift one heel at a time, alternating legs, three times on each side, right? Keeping the toe part of your foot down if you're doing that one, or bringing leg all the way up to tabletop and down, alternating legs, three times on each side there. We're trying not to twist or shift the pelvis as we do this. And we're trying to keep the hips high. They have a tendency to sag. And remember what keeps the hips high? Mr. Thut, right where your thigh and your butt meet. So right, we're gonna take an inhale to prepare. Exhale, press your feet in the floor, lift on up. Inhale, lift one foot. Exhale, put it down. Inhale, lift your other foot. Exhale, put it down. Lift and down and lift. And down. Are you putting the foot down with control if you're doing the tabletop version? One more here. That's your last leg. And put your bum on the floor. Little side to side rock here. Alrighty. We have been on our backs long enough. Time to flip over onto your tummy. We're going to go to a little exercise called one leg kick. It's an exercise that helps stretch out the front line of the leg. It's that double knee bend one. So we can either be down flat with your chest on the floor, right, collarbones wide. Don't kind of prop yourself up by pulling the elbows in, right? The elbows are wide. Or the other option, of course, is being up on our elbows here. Now, this is a more challenging position to hold. If you're up on your elbows, you can think about pulling your elbows away from your body. It helps. Lift your torso off the floor. You're not really moving the elbows. It just helps the torso lift away from the floor. So belly buttons in, take an inhale to prepare. Bend your leg, pull your toe in, pull your heel in, straighten. Toe, heel, and straighten. Toe, heel, and straighten. Now, if you're getting lots of popping and cracking in your knees, you wanna make your range of motion smaller to where the crack isn't happening. Because that crack is your body saying, I don't like that range of motion. Don't go there, yeah? And the other thing is, if this hurts your knees, you want to be down on your belly for it, not up in the position I'm in right now. Toe, heel, straighten, alternating legs. Toe, heel, straighten. Are you breathing? Toe, heel, straighten. Last one, toe, heel, and straighten. Let's come down on to our bellies. I want your hands under your forehead. I want you to open your 
Oh, hang on. I lost my mind for a moment. I'm not going to do that one. We're going to do a little bit of single leg extension here. So right kneecaps are pointing straight at the floor. Collarbones are wide. You're going to inhale, pull your pubic bone forward. That's how reach at one foot and lift the leg barely off the floor. The thigh is still on the floor. And back down again. Same leg, take an inhale. That's so lifting up. Do you feel a sense of compression right where your thigh and your butt meet? And come back down again. That's what we're looking for. Inhale. Exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. And exhale down. Now let's go to the other side. So inhale, pubic bone is forward. Exhale, lift. Inhale. Exhale down, same leg, exhale lift. Are your shoulders still out of your ears? And down, two more, inhale, exhale lift. And back down, one more. Feeling that work of compression right where your thigh and your butt meet. And back down again. Good, little side to side rock here. So it's not about lifting your leg high. Remember, back, ex right, extension of the hip joint, which is what we're doing in that exercise, right? Taking the leg backwards. Range of motion is incredibly small. Um, so if we lift too high, we're starting to change the shape of the pelvis. And there's nothing wrong with your pelvis moving when you move your leg. We're just trying to give your body options. So let's do this same exercise, but let's try it on the two breath. So belly buttons in, collarbones are wide. Inhale, pubic bone forward. Exhale, lift one leg. Inhale down, reach out your total lift and down, same leg, lift and down. Are you feeling the compression where your thigh and your butt meet? And down, one more here. Now let's do the other side. Lift and down and lift and down. Exhale, lift, down, two, down, last one and down. Good, now. We're gonna go back, we're gonna go to a little bit of breaststroke prep here. And right, we're just gonna leave your arms where they are. Belly buttons in, you're gonna inhale, slide your shoulders out of your ears, and exhale, use your back muscles to lift your upper chest away from the floor. Inhale, exhale, back down again. Inhale, slide your shoulder blades. Exhale, reach out the top of the head, lifting up, inhale. And back down again. Now remember, if you wanna make this hard, lift your arms with you, otherwise, they can stay down on the floor. And back down again, one more here, inhale, slide. Exhale, lift, inhale, and back down again. Let's go to our shell stretch. So right, lifting up, sitting back over your heels, a little softness in the elbows. Trying to pull your belly away from your legs to help the rounding in the back. A little side to side rock is always nice with this. And we're gonna do a little bit of side leg work. We're gonna start with the kick. So make sure you set yourself up so you're not gonna kick any furniture or anything. Line up the back of your torso against your mat. Then angle your feet forward to the front of your mat. Voila, the legs are at that 45 we're looking for. Now, make sure the hips aren't rolled back. The side of the waist is off the floor. Your fingertips can be on the floor to help you balance, or you can have your hand on your leg. You're gonna lift your top leg up, kick it forward twice, go on, inhale, inhale. Exhale, point your foot and pull it behind you. And forward, inhale, inhale. Exhale, point your foot and pull it behind you. This is a little bounce in the tissue here. And pull back. In, in. Exhale, slowly reach back. Is your leg staying the same height off the floor as you're taking it forward and back? In, in. Exhale, take it back. One more here. In, in. And exhale, take it back. Now, straight line from your head to your feet. Side of the waist is off the floor, but not the side of the ribs. You're gonna lift your top leg up, flex your foot, bring it down, point your foot, reach up, flex your foot, bring it down, point your foot. Inhale as you go up, and exhale as you come down. Inhale as you go up, and exhale as you come down. One more here, inhale up, 
and exhale down. We're gonna do circles today. So lift the top leg up, 10 little circles going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Are you hula dancing? Hope not, 10, reversing. One, two, three, four. Make sure it goes behind you. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Rest your leg down. Now, to find the inner thigh of that bottom leg, I want you to bend that top knee, drop it forward. And then you're just gonna lift your bottom leg and release. Still trying to keep your waist off the floor as you lift your bottom leg and release because we're trying to stabilize the pelvis. So it's just the inner thigh lifting that leg. Exhale, lift, inhale, release. Exhale, lift, inhale, release. Two more, lift and release. Last one, lift and release. Good, now I want you to stack your legs and bend them, bringing your knees forward. We're gonna do an arm exercise here. So I want you to start with your hand right up over top of your shoulder. And then I want you to angle your arm down like you're pointing towards where the wall and the ceiling meets, kind of where your feet are pointing at. And then from here, I want you to imagine there's a light bulb in your hand and you're gonna screw that light bulb in and screw the light bulb out. And to do that, I want you to get that elbow turning. You're gonna breathe. I don't care how you breathe on this one, just breathe. Now, if you're getting lots of popping and snapping and cracking, bring your hand closer to your hip to do this exercise. Yeah. We'll do just one more of them and then rest your arm on your leg. Now we're going to clamshell here. So I want you to look at your knees and notice if they're stuck. You might be rolled back a little bit and side of the waist is still off the floor because, right? You're reaching that top sit bone away from the top of your head. Ribs aren't pushed out though. And I want you to feel the outside of that bottom foot on the floor. Can you sense that? Keep that there. Clam shell your top knee open and close. Now, if you keep the heels together as you do this, and you really think about reaching that top knee forward as you go up and down, it'll really help emphasize the external rotators, which are right where your thigh and your butt meet and deep in your bum. If you're getting a giant range of motion here, your pelvis is moving, I guarantee you. Yeah, exhale, open, inhale, close. So it's not about trying to get your knee to point at the same last one of these. Open and close. Beautiful. Got to do this on the other side. So, right. We're gonna set up for our kick to begin with. So remember that's where the legs are at a 45 to the torso. The feet are flexed, the side of the waist is off the floor, the side of the ribs are down. You're gonna lift your top leg up, kick it forward twice. Going inhale, inhale, exhale, point your foot and pull it behind you. Then forward, inhale, inhale, exhale, point your foot and pull it behind you. In, in, exhale, reach back. In, in, exhale, reach back. In, in, exhale, reach back. Two more here. In, in, and reach. Last one, in, in, and reach. Straight line from your head to your feet. Hips are stacked. You're gonna lift your top leg up, flex your foot, bring it down, point your foot. Reach up, flex, bring it down, point. Now, when I'm here, I'm not trying to grip through my core a lot, right? What I want is I want to sense that it's reactive to my leg moving, you know? And it's just not letting me wobble around. One more here. Let's do circles, lifting up, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Reverse it. One, two, three, four four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Drop your top knee forward. And you're gonna exhale, lift that bottom leg, inhale, release. Now remember, side of the waist stays off the floor the whole time. Exhale, lift, inhale, release. Exhale, lift, inhale, release. Exhale, lift, inhale, release. Two more, reach out that foot to lift. One more, lift and release. Now, stack your knees. They're gonna come in front of you. We're going to that shoulder exercise. Bring your arm up over your shoulder 
and then angle it down towards your hip a bit, pointing at where your wall and your ceiling meet. And then we're gonna do that rotation where we're getting elbow to turn, kind of like you're screwing a light bulb in and out. Remember, if you got popping and cracking going on, get that hand closer to your hip. And we'll just do one more of these and rest your arm down. Now, right, look down at your knees, make sure they're stacked. If not, the top knee even a little further forward. Make sure the side of your waist is off the floor. Can you sense the outside of that bottom foot on the floor? Now, exhale, open that top knee. Inhale, close. Exhale, open. Inhale, close. So you're trying not to let that top ASIS point roll back as you do this. Really reach out your knee forward as the leg goes up and down. Exhale, open. Inhale, close. So it's not about pushing your bottom leg into the floor. It's about finding the work deep in your bum on the side that's moving. And close and right right on the thigh of button. One more here. Exhale, open. And inhale, close. Good, rest. Let's go onto our back. Do a wee touch of a release for this. So if you like something extra under your head, Pop it under your head, step your feet to the width of your mat, and just drop one knee into the middle, pick it up, drop your other knee into the middle, and pick it up and breathe. Yeah. And this might give you releases lots of different places, not just the hip, you might feel it. Shoulders, your neck, your low back, your ribs, all kinds of places, yeah. Last one here. And then I'd like to do a little swan dive before we call it a class, just to get our bigger back extension in. So I want you to flip onto your tummy, bring your hands to the width of your mat, um, right elbow, fingertip to elbows on the floor, legs are open to a V shape, and those muscles we just found in our clamshell are working to pull your heels towards the middle. So we have a little bit of an outward rotation of the leg. Your knees will never be 100% sideways if you don't change the shape of your pelvis. And we don't want to change the shape of our pelvis. So you're going to inhale, slide your shoulders away from your ears. Exhale, use your back muscles to come up onto your elbows and then use your arms and your bum to come higher. Inhale here and exhale back down again. Now, right, turn of the thigh actually stays on the floor in this exercise. Your ASIS points come off the floor and come back down again. What you're looking for is that at the top, you feel your bum doing something and come back down again. One more here. Exhale, as you go up, inhale, hold, reach out those toes and back down again. Let's go to our shell stretch. Last one of the day, folks. Sit back on your heels, scoop your belly button in, little side to side, rock through the hips. I find it's always nice after that just to help the tissue that's right across your sacrum, right? That triangular bone in the back of your pelvis, it's the bottom of your spine that you just feel a little bit of a release to that. Anyways. That's all the time I have today. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. And uh, I hope to see you again real soon.